Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit ComlexFlashcards.com for Comlex prep resources. We would like to thank our viewers for all the comments they're sending in regards to improving these lecture series. Again, please visit ComlexFlashcards.com and subscribe to the blog as well as comment if you would like to have specific lectures. Let's talk about precocious puberty. This is a condition that's defined as puberty onset less than 8 years of age for girls and less than 9 years in boys. The onset of secondary sexual characteristics before the age of 8 is a common definition. Now there are subtypes here that you need to understand. There's central precocious puberty and it results from early activation of the hypothalamic GnRH production, most commonly idiopathic, and it may be related to obesity. It can also be caused by CNS tumors. There's peripheral precocious puberty, and that's called pseudo-precocious puberty. Now that results in non-GnRH production. So understand that the laboratory test that you would need is GnRH. That's your key factor here that you would want to focus on. Now, what is the most common brain lesion that causes precocious puberty? The answer is hypothalamic hamartoma. This consists of a GnRH secretory neurons. On MRI, you'll see mass on the floor of the third ventricle. And side in signs include diabetes insipidus, hyperthermia, unusual laughing, and visual symptoms. Now, name the endocrine disorder associated with patchy pigmentation of the skin and fibrous dysplasia of the skeletal system. Well, that's mucane albright syndrome. And so, these are just a few things you want to keep in mind as you're thinking about precocious puberty. Let's go through each of the algorithm for working up precocious puberty so you get a better understanding. Now, first, as a patient presents to you with precocious puberty, you're most likely going to see signs of estrogen excess, breast development and possibly vaginal bleeding, to ovarian cysts or tumors. There's also signs of androgen excess, pubic and axillary hair, enlarged clitoris, increased body odor. All these suggest adrenal tumors or congenital adrenal aplasia. How do you make the diagnosis? Well, the first step is to obtain a radiograph with the wrist and the hand, okay? Wrist and the hand to determine the bone age. If the bone age is within one year of the chronological age, puberty has not started or has just recently begun. But if the bone age exceeds the chronological age by greater than two years, then puberty has been present for at least one year or is progressing rapidly. The next step is to get a GnRH analog like luprolide simulation test. Okay, so first you get the bone scan, I mean the radiograph of the wrist and the hand not the bone scan, and then you get the GnRH stimulation test. For central precocious puberty, if the LH response is positive, then you obtain a cranial MRI to look for CNS tumors. Now in girls between 6 to 8 years of age with signs of precocious puberty, the incidence of CNS tumors is only 2%. And if CNS tumors are ruled out, then constitutional precocious puberty is likely the etiology. For peripheral precocious puberty, if the LH response is negative, then you order the following, an ultrasound of the ovaries and the adrenals, and you also get a estradiol level. You want to look for the ovarian and the adrenal glands for any kinds of cysts or tumors. You want to look for estradiol because these levels will be increased in ovarian cysts or tumors. Now, if the onset of secondary sexual characteristics is seen by age 8, then work up for precocious puberty by determining the bone age and conducting the GnRH simulation test to determine central from peripheral puberty is recommended. What are some of the basic causes of peripheral precocious puberty? Well, congenital adrenal aplasia, adrenal tumors, polycystic fibrous dysplasia, also known as mucane albright syndrome, gonadal tumors and exogenous estrogen or oral OCPs as well as ovarian cysts. Now what about central causes? Well you have idiopathic, hamartomas, tumors and congenital malformations of the hypothalamus, dysgerminomas, 
hydrocephalus, CNS infections, pineal tumors, and also an association with tuberous sclerosis and neurofibromatosis. So those are some of the key things you would want to keep in mind as you're studying for the board exam. The other things you want to look for are the androgen, DHEA levels, okay, and 17-OH progesterone to screen for advanced bone age. How do you treat this condition? Well, the treatment consists of central precocious puberty, mainly luprolide as the first line therapy. With treatment, physical changes regress or cease to progress, and that's a key sign of its efficacy. For peripheral precocious puberty, you would treat the cause. So if it's ovarian cysts, then you really don't need any intervention unless the cysts are rapidly enhancing, but in most cases, they will regress. For congenital adrenal hyperplasia, you treat with glucocorticoids, and surgery is not required for the treatment of ambiguous genitalia. Okay? Um, Adrenal or ovarian tumors require surgical resection, and mucane albright syndrome requires anti-estrogens like tamoxifen or estrogen synthetic blockers like ketoconazole or testolactone. Those may be effective. That's a review of precocious puberty. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures on gynecology and obstetrics as you prepare for the Comlex board exam. Good luck in your preparation for the board exam.